at the breath of life, brain first. Examining the relationship between brain and body is important for understanding child development and mental health. In human system science, in the best interest of the child's mental health and self-awareness, Dr. Slayton analyzes this topic from a system science perspective, focusing on three areas, training, preparing, and organizing the brain. He discusses how children may increasingly display behaviors not typical of their previous character as they experience what he terms a crisis of self. According to Dr. Slayton, this issue is related to early developmental approaches. Infants primarily interact with their environment through the receive path from birth, learning and connecting with the world around them. However, postnatally, many caregivers and educators reportedly prioritize training the brain by setting behavioral patterns over facilitating natural experiential processing. Dr. Slayton suggests that such a focus may limit a child's ability to engage with interactions without pre-existing knowledge. Infants communicate needs through emotional cues, described by Dr. Slayton as baby talk, which is brain talk. Emphasizing training may reduce opportunities for forming neural connections that support the development of a sense of feel or the ability to process rather than react to interactions. Sensory experiences contribute to the organization of the brain by transferring information between brain and body, allowing emotion, memory, thought, and reflection to develop. Dr. Slayton describes this as a neural connection between caregiver and child that helps children learn skills like focus and appropriate response. He notes that perceived care in educational settings encourages receptivity among children. Without this perception, education may be limited to memorization instead of deeper processing. The brain-body connection plays a key role Sensory input supports the formation of self-awareness and focused thinking. Dr. Slayton points out that when caregivers address only physical needs, children might learn to react rather than process. He recommends that communication with children should engage their brains, regardless of emotional state, since the brain responds, the body reacts. This approach aims to promote processing of reactions and improve self-awareness and emotional regulation. Understanding the difference between reaction and response is central to cognitive processes. Reactions tend to be automatic, while responses involve the brain receiving and processing before acting, which supports reflective awareness and reduces ongoing reactive patterns. Dr. Slayton's framework applies these concepts to support mental health and self-awareness. Hello, welcome to Dr. Slayton Live, the brain, body, the ultimate experience. That's you. And today we're talking about the brain, but that's not unusual, but what's unusual is that we're going to talk about three levels. Training the brain, preparing the brain, organizing the brain. Because in my new book, what I'm talking about is mental health and self-awareness, but in the best interest of the child. And I'm talking from a systems science perspective, which means that those three things interrelate. But I want to talk about it because it's critical. We have so many children who are acting out of character as they get older, they're aging into the crisis self. And that's because if you read my book, I'm talking about the breath of life experience. And at the breath of life, I'm saying that you're born to interact through the receive path. So you seek life through the womb to receive interaction. And in receiving interaction, that's the brain leading the body. And that's learning from that contact with the external environment, the doctor, the parent, and so forth and so on. But once the infant comes out of the womb, Training begins, training the brain begins. And so the received path takes a back seat because we want to format the child response patterns to suit your expectations or our expectations and not allow the infant to evolve and that you should feel the child's experience and process the child's physics so that you're actually connecting neural systems from self and the child 
so that you can begin to understand how to address the needs of the baby crying. Because that's not just crying, that's baby talk. I talk about baby talk inside the book. Brain talk is what it's called, because infants are trying to tell you what they need. But if you're too busy trying to train the brain, then you negate, negate the fact that the child has to learn how to solve the problem of interacting with you without a knowledge base, without memory, just emotion. And they have to learn how to process that. So think about what I'm, I'm moving you through. Brain learning. So at the next step, you're talking about a sense of feel because the brain develops a sense of feel through the infant's capacity to interact through you, feel you, and move through the way you feel. Neurologically, that's the neural system being acclimated to interaction with you, to move beyond the contact of reacting and responding, to processing you. And so now the child has a memory stick, not a state of mind, memory moving through the receive path, being formatted so that the child can begin to think and reflect on the experience of you. That's processing, that's not training. Training is when you negate that and say, this is what I expect you to do. I'm saying your expectation is that when you touch the infant, they're supposed to react. And you judge that reaction by studying their body to see how their behavior is forming. You're not looking for process, you're looking for the way they respond to you. So you are the influencer. And what you do is try to influence a specific behavior pattern. That's not thinking. That's reacting or responding. So we're talking about two levels there. The first level we talked about was training the brain. Now let's move to organizing the brain because brain learning has to move through sensory. And sensory is organization of brain-body connections. The senses transfer information between the brain and the body to organize emotion, memory, thought, and reflection. Here's your sense path. Memory, emotion, being transferred to the nervous system where thought and reflection is the brain's response. So you have process. So when I say sense to feel, I mean sense to feel to process the energy, action, and feelings, not emotion, because you're talking about the neural system, a feel for how it feels to feel these feelings moving through the infant and you simultaneously. What I'm talking about is the connection between the parent-child bond. And so you prepare the brain to interact through a sense of feel for you. Now, that's not training, that's giving the child a way of solving the problem. Who are you? What are you? Why are you? When are you? Where are you? Who are you? How are you? Those are all research questions. And then you turn it back around because the child is trying to define the same thing of their sense of self in relation to you. And they have to have a sense of feel to think it through because the sense of feel is a telepathic energy between you and the child's brain. It's neural processing taking place. The way you feel for your child, the way your child feels for you. And I'm not excluding anyone else. I'm saying parents, teachers, psychologists, and so on and so forth. When you interact with another person, you're trying to get a feel, a connection, a neural connection to what their experience is. Because then you can weigh brain-body connectivity can the child focus, sense to feel to focus, the flow of your contact interaction through their receive path, to receive, process, and respond. What I just said, I said receive, process, not receive, react. I said receive, process, the sense of feel for self and you, or you and the child, to respond, because the brain's sending that forward feed but you're ready now because you've been prepared. Brain's been formatted through signs of care. I always tell children when they work with me, you don't respond in a program 
without signs of care. That means the teacher had to show you signs of care for you to respond to their instruction. Why? Because if they're not open, this is John Dewey, if, you, if they're not open, they're not receiving your information because they're looking for a predictable pattern of response. They don't care what's in it. They just want to make sure that it's rote memory being displayed that they can look on the sheet and score. And that's training the brain. So the body's actually in the lead because they're measuring the body, not the brain. They're measuring the response of the body. Is the body acting out, for example, or is the body under control? No, the body isn't under control because the brain is the only thing to control the body through the senses. And that's because your sense of feel for self is a neural connection to the brain. So you focus, sense to feel to focus the brain. And when you focus the brain, thought and reflection is coming through. That's what you're doing. You're creating that open space that Dewey talked about for that information forward and backward feed, bi-directional interaction to take place. I'm talking about the brain's body. I'm talking about the brain's body gel. That's what we're talking about. How the brain is the lead of the body so that you can make better choices and decisions because you become more aware. And at the same time, when I talk about sense and receive, I'm talking about your mental health. Because if you came into the world and you were dealt with physically without acknowledging the brain, then they addressed the needs of your body because it was physical. So when you were crying, they were trying to stop you from crying by doing things to the body, rubbing the body, for example, but not talking to the brain. Listen to me. Parents, teachers know when a, a child is upset, you talk to their brain because the brain responds. It doesn't matter if they're emotional. The brain responds. The body reacts. That's why they're crying. That's a reaction. But when they process that reaction, they stop, calm, cool, collected to move through the crisis self. You got to read the book. It's in the book. And that's a short presentation. Hope you enjoyed it. I didn't want to get too, you know, because I've been told, I'm not a neuroscientist, I'm a human system scientist, but because I talk about human cognitive behavior sciences, some people think I'm talking about neuroscience when I'm talking about cognitive information processing. Because more than anything else, I study Shannon communications theory, and I understood it. The difference was when you apply it to human systems, it's the brain, body, sense, messaging. And it's bi-directional, based upon the neural system and environmental stimuli. That's when I talk about reaction, response. I say, you may think they're the same, but they're not. A reaction is spontaneous. The brain just reacts. The brain just reacts. No, the brain does not just react. The body does that. The brain receives to process, to respond. So it catches up to the reaction. The reaction, the brain sends forward feed to catch up to the reaction, to process the experience as you're moving into it. So for example, you just now did something, but then you caught yourself. Wow. And now you realize, because reflection is, wow, I don't know why that happened, but it shouldn't happen anymore because I recognized that I did not process sin thought before I reacted. Instead, I just reacted. Was it emotion? Was it just raw memory? No, that's what we're talking about. So when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the science of self. Study self, study the brain. Thou stay live, trying to keep it real, straight talk, speak the truth, pick up my new book, Human Social Science, The Best Interest of the Child, Mental Health, Self-Awareness. And remember, I still have free copies available if you hit me up at brain talk at 
drslatonline.com. Brain talk at drslatonline.com. If you hit me up there, leave your email, I'll send you your own copy. Now remember, the brain is inside the body, but the body is wired to the brain. And what that means is throughout your whole human system, the brain is wired to the body to help the body control the physics, the emotion, the aggression, three things, energy, action, and feelings, tuning out.